何か隣原さんでよかったねえ別に優しいしホワホワだし可愛い,いしうん山田しか見えない Episode seven. So, this was such a good episode of The Dangers in My Heart. And, you know, last week when I talked to you guys about episode six, one of the kind of like things that kept coming up is like, I've been waiting for the glass to kind of overfill. And I really think that we are literally here at the tipping point. And the little moments that this episode kind of really curated for us and really kind of like fed to us on a platter here really indicate all of that, right? So we have the, you know, at, at the kind of like chain of events that happen is immediately we start off with seeing, you know, Kyoturo thinking or, or seeing Yamada on a, t on a TV show and him wanting to watch it, right? Uh, we get then him looking up Yamada on the internet and kind of like getting really angry about some of the comments that he was seeing from, you know, the people on the internet. Cause that's how it works. You put anything on the internet and you're going to get somebody who loves you and you're going to get a bunch of people who hate you and that's just, or, or jealous or whatever the case is. But that's simply the way that the internet works. So he begins to get all, all you know, really a angry about all of that. And then we get to the, the next part of the show where, you know, they're doing a run. Now, during the run, Kyoto is a little bit slow. So, I mean, he's a slower character. That's just simply what it is. And uh, Yamada decides, uh, decides to keep pace with him. And uh, she, she even grabs at him, grabs him and everything. And so much so, you know, that at some point he's like, you know, we're supposed to keep our, our relationship here a secret. And she's basically like, whatever, dude. And, you know, during that, during like, like that thing there, like you see them spending more time together. She ends up on the ground. Uh, she reaches out for him. He, you know, she holds his hand, to, you know, to get up again. You know, so they have another hand holding moment following the hand holding moment we got from the last episode. Then they swap、uh, jackets, you know, accidentally or unaccidentally, you know, because Kyoturo thinks that, you know, Yamada is this bumbling idiot, you know, bumbling giant who only thinks of snacks and doesn't really have any thought. But I'm pretty sure that she did this on purpose, you know, to kind of get it, like, you know, to wear it,、uh, to feel it, to get a whiff of it, because she likes him, right? So you have all those little moments that they shared. And the whole entire time, we, we're, we're, we're treated with this hilarious. You know, three to five minutes of him just internalizing it and freaking out and stressing out. And、uh, even when he's at the, you know, he, he goes to like say, I'm going to answer this question on the board. And he's looking at her and he's like pointing to his chest. He's like, you know, pointing to his chest. And she's just there like, <laughs> like looking at him. And I thought that was like a hilarious moment. And then she puts it on and she's walking around with it. She freaks out. And eventually they meet up in the, in the nurse's office, and he was like, Didn't you know, blah, blah. She's like, I don't know. And then she, she smelled his thing. So I was like, Oh, what a cute moment there. And again, you have this whole time of them、uh, of thinking that, you know,、um, or, or him thinking that she didn't realize it, but she definitely, definitely realized it.、Uh, and, you know, you have that moment there. Then they go into, and、um, uh, Yamada has the idea, let, let's, you know, let's、uh, measure each other. Let's see how tall you know, each other are. And he can't quite. She can't quite get the thing to work to measure him. Obviously, he's a lot shorter.、Uh, so then he grabs a chair to measure her, and we figure out how tall she is. She's 172 centimeters, which means she's 5'6,、uh, which the whole entire time in the show, you know, again, mind you, they're middle school, so they're like, you know, 14, because、uh, I believe they're going to graduate middle school soon. So they're like, you know, 14 years old, somewhere around there. And、uh, the whole time I'm thinking that this Yamada girl, like, she's a giant, but really, she's a giant among children. Uh, so she's 5'6, but really,、uh, that means that our boy k i a t r o is probably like 5'1 or 5'2.、Uh, so I think that's what like, her general size just kind of really elevates over everybody here, which is crazy. But really, she's only like 5'6. So the whole time I'm thinking that she's, she's you know, ginormous. She's like you know, 5'11 or something, but she's not quite there, which is good、uh, for k i a t r o if she doesn't get any taller. Uh, and the other thing is,、uh, she accidentally stepped on the scale, so he saw her weight. She made that a big deal. So, again, you have these really cute little touchy moments that they continue to share over and over and over.、Uh, then we see that, you know, as, as stringing along the episode, then we see the, the next part where it's like, oh, she got a movie. So, she, she, she got the ability to be in a movie. She got an acting part here. And k i a t r o notices that she's not happy. She looks unhappy. She, you would think that somebody who just nailed a movie, you know, would not be depresso, but they would be really happy. 
Um, so we, we kind of get, you know, that lingering theme. And later on in the episode, we figure out, you know, when, they, when they're in the library, we figure out why she was that way. And it's because everybody was excited that she was in a movie. Everybody was excited about who she's, you know, going to be acting alongside. Everyone was excited the fact that she's going to be an actress. But nobody was really interested in what part she's playing, what lines she has, what, you know, what her characters. Nobody was asking those questions. And that's when, you know, Kiatoro opens up the floodgates to, you know, ask her. And she just begins to tell him everything. And she was just really, she really just wanted somebody, which is good that it ends up being him. She wanted somebody to share that fact that, you know, she was, she was excited about this specific character and her one line in the movie and what her, what her part is and the fact that her dad dies a tragic death in this movie. And, you know, she wanted to talk about the, the details, but nobody, everybody was excited about the fact she was in a movie and who she's going to be. Uh, who's in the movie with her, but not exactly what she was doing in it. So, again, he was able to share a really touchy moment uh, with her, which I thought was really, really uh, interesting and really, really funny and really cute as well. And now I'm going to circle back to that in one second. So the next chain of events that happened after the movie and the Depresso was um, they're they're going to switch desks this day. And the very long story short of it is, um, he, you know, he's praying to the gods that she is, sits next to him or in front of her or in front of him, uh, and it ends up being the fact that she actually sits kitty corner to him, so it's really within arm's length still, and uh, Hara, the, you know, the chubby, you know, chubby girl sits next to him, and, you know, while they're there and everything, uh, you know, the dude who's all about the booba sits in front of him, he pretends that he lost his book that day, uh, and, you know, um, Immediately, Kyoto gets jealous. He's like, you know, he goes and gets you mean, this book because Yamada was about to share her book with him. Uh, and then because he can't see the whole time, he's trying to like look around uh, Yamada because she just takes up so much space. He can't see the, the board. Yamada the whole time thinks he's looking at her, but really he's like he's trying to see around her. Uh, Hara notices and she moves her desk next to him. She's like, you can copy my notes. Uh, and this makes uh, Yamana really, really angry and really jealous. She's like, oh, because you do it, it's okay. And again, just this moment, this, this, this thing is just bubbling over. Feelings are bubbling over. Uh, later in the class, you know, she makes her jealousy and being pissed off very evident. She verbalizes it to him, which I thought was really cool. And he hits her with, a, with an amazing line saying, you know, in class, you're the only one I can look at. Now, what he meant, <laughs> what he meant was, you're so tall, I can't see over you. But how it came out was, you know, my eyes are fixated only on you. And then he realized what he just said, which was a really cute and funny moment. Later on, then, when they're in the library, so now we, we're, we're all the way circled back now when they're in the library talking about the movie, he actually does kind of clarify, it's like, you know, you were... I just couldn't see past you, and uh, we get we get a scene where we see that they swap desk, and he's actually in front of her, uh, still kitty corner, but in front now, uh, so he can actually see because he's just too short. Uh, so I think that was just you know again these these chain of events that they keep doing are smooth and they're they're awesome. Uh, the episode ends with like let's you know let's practice my lines, and uh, they do, and because the students were staring because she was like grabbing him and everything. He's like, let's go somewhere else where we can do this. And t she takes him to a storeroom, and they're really, really close, uh, like, you know, within, like, face distance of each other. And uh, she gets really, really happy when he's, when you know, she's like, would you see my movie? He's like, oh, I don't know, I don't know. But eventually he's like, you know, I'll find a way. And she's, she lights up from that. Uh, and then, again, they share a really cool moment. Uh, episode officially ends with her part in some... Uh, reality hosting type show and uh, he's just angry that she doesn't have more time but overall this show was just this episode was just really good again I feel like their love is bubbling over I feel like feelings are about to come out and the way it's done it has just been so so good it has me captivated and I throughout the whole episode I'm laughing at Kyoto's stress and um, Yamada's lack of stress it's just been such a pleasure to watch but this was such a good episode all right, I'm off to play Tears of the Kingdom. Let me know what you guys thought about this episode down in the comments below. I'll see you guys next week. Peace.